I started playing the piano at age four. And piano was my first instrument and only instrument for quite a long time, until I was 10. And the reason why I play bass um, is that my mother um, gave me the option to play a second instrument. Because my sisters, older sisters, both played a second instrument. And they both played violin, and I hated going to their Suzuki violin lessons. It was, uh, yes, it was like listening to cats scream. So, <laughs> I knew I wanted to get as far away from the violin as possible at that time. I mean, I love violin now, but back then, not so much. So, uh, my mother suggested the bass. And she said, you know, there aren't a lot of female bass players, which sadly is still kind of true right now. She said, so you'll get lots of opportunities to play in ensembles. And being a pianist, I, I didn't have that opportunity. I didn't have a lot of ensemble opportunities. And I really wanted that. And so when I played bass, I finally got to work with other kids playing music. And that was a lot of fun, especially as I got into middle school and high school. And so the middle school and high school youth orchestra programs and summer programs that I went to really are what convinced me to continue with bass. I could have continued and gone to college for piano, but um, those summer orchestral programs were really what did it for me. And so I applied to music schools and went to chose Indiana University for music school, which is a great school and a great bass school specifically. And so I graduated from there. And then after that, uh, freelanced for a bit and then got my first job in the Louisiana Philharmonic. Uh, and stayed there for a few years, which I loved. I love living in New Orleans. It's a fabulous city. I highly recommend it. But um, knew I needed to move on. So I took the audition for the Colorado Symphony. And uh, when I got that job, um, moved here and have been here ever since. And I joined Lamont in 2000. I do. I play jazz. I write, I write music uh, that's both jazz and, and non-jazz centric. I wouldn't call myself a traditional jazz bass player in that I mostly play my own music that I write, which is fun for me. And I already play a lot of other people's music in my day job and other worlds. And so for me, writing jazz and playing jazz, having it be my own thing, is it's sort of like a selfish desire thing that I love. And my teaching philosophy in general is to listen. As hard as I listen in chamber music or as in, in orchestral music, to listen that hard to what the student is saying and what they're playing. And I find if I do that, I never, my instincts are always pretty good for what the student wants. I always think of my lessons as basically in three parts. I think of them in terms of, of technique and of their solo work. And then the third part is usually either orchestral work, if they're working on that, or it could be the other part of their growth that they're in, in, involved in, which could be a chamber work, it could be you know, gearing up for a recital. And so I generally have those three things in mind every time a lesson starts, but I never have a set amount of time for each. It really is dependent on what the student needs at the time. So every week as a uh, member of the bass studio here at Lamont, you will be involved in, in bass studio class, which is just the basses where we get together. Um, and that class looks like um, a combination of work on ensemble music that we're all doing together, or not, but that needs to be done, technique work, and also playing your solo rep for your peers. And that's, again, just bass playing. And then every week there's also a string class. And that's where all the string students come together and you're required to play in that as, let's say, an undergraduate major. You're required to play in that once a quarter. And that's for all the string professors and all of the string students. So that's a really great experience. Then, of course, there's um, constant little meetups that happen throughout the week in the, with the bass studio. If someone needs help on a particular thing, or if we decide, hey, we need, you know, Shostakovich 5 is coming up, we should do two bass classes, we might do that. 
Of course, there's pedagogy classes that people, majors have to take, and there's orchestral excerpt classes that, that people have to take. And so those happen um, within the base environment as well, just the base students. There's a lot of playing opportunities here at the Um I often have to counsel my freshman students or my first year graduate students or my certificate students that they have to practice saying no more than they have to practice saying yes. Because there are so many places where they could be used, which is one of the fabulous things about bass, that their, their time and especially their practice time can easily be eaten up by too many ensemble requests. Um, that being said, if they're interested in modern music, there's a place for them. If they're interested in unconducted string ensemble, there's a place for them. Horse orchestra, wind ensemble always needs a bass player. And wind ensemble music for basses is really um, underappreciated and undervalued. And there's great Dvorak pieces. It's some, one of my favorite pieces in the world is a Dvorak serenade, wind serenade that has bass. And, and then, of course, there's all the jazz and commercial musics that they can be doing. So there's tons of opportunities, and Denver itself has a lot of opportunities for them to reach out, branch out, um, beyond the walls of Vermont to play music. Pretty fortunate. If I have to like compare Lamont to, say, the type of schooling that I had, one of the best things about it is the amount of individual attention you'll get. Um, I was at IU, there were 30 other bass players. And that sounds great and fun until uh, you realize that it's, it's a bit of a clawing your way to the top situation. And although that was really instructive in a lot of ways, um, this environment is structured very differently. It's a small school. And, and so since I know that world and I know this world, I feel like I have the best of both things to give to a student. I can certainly push people really hard the way I was pushed uh, at IU, and, but yet I also feel the value of all the individual attention that can happen here. Um, designing a, a, basically a four-year curriculum, four-year relationship with a student to make sure they succeed. So um, I think the variety of things that I personally do in terms of jazz and chamber music. I do a lot of chamber music and writing, and I think I bring a lot of that to, to the studio as well. A lot of different experiences that I have as a bass player, not just as an orchestral player.